let me see here. Uh, Summoner Speak. I don't know what episode this is. Technically, um, I'm kind of. It started as a. It was like the boot camp thing. I was doing guest speakers, which I think I was gonna have you do one. I think. Did I message you about that or no? Uh, I think you did, and then like plans changed. Yeah, I think things just didn't didn't work out. It was funny. I was looking at our Discord messages. It's in 2017. You said, I don't know why this dude wanted to talk, wanted me to talk YouTube when you seem like the man to go to. What, what was that? Dude, that was that like was? this weird. I'm going to be real with you, dude. You know what? I'm just going to come out and say it. I don't care. Is this live? Uh, It's not live, but it is recorded. All right. I don't care. I'm pretty sure we all got scammed. We were part of some like weird YouTube like syndicate that like this like guy was like basically saying he was going to sponsor us and give us all kinds of stuff to like give away to our fans every single week. No, of course nobody ever received anything. Uh <laughs> and, and that yeah, it was like me, you and like five other people and like dude, it was almost like a cult. He like got us on like a call every week to like check up on our progress and stuff. And uh When was this? I don't remember this. I, I guess it was in 2017 whenever that message was. But Weird. Yeah, yeah. It, pre it pretty quickly died off when we realized that there was no actual like free giveaway stuff because he was like promising to give us like gaming chairs and like keyboards and all kind. Uh, yeah, yeah. I've I've seen so many zany characters over the years in this space where yeah, I believe you. I just don't remember it. So um, <clears throat> anyways, first before we get started, uh, I first Ioki, my man. Um, congrats because I rem I. You know we've been in the scene for a while uh and i i've seen i've seen that things have been going pretty well for you i would i would imagine uh, you were recently uh a part of i believe it was a twitch rivals event as you know i i stream on facebook right now but i do keep tabs on the twitch scene a little bit uh, i know you were with the you were in tyler one's team i believe for i don't know when it was i'm not i'm just not sure about the timeline but it seemed like you guys did pretty well and and things were pretty cool yeah right? yeah that was yeah it was excellent honestly twitch rivals dude they gotta hook you facebook guys up with like a facebook rivals or something because <laughs> I, dude i seriously like it's so much fun so uh yeah, yeah. I, i've actually competed in four of them over the last year um mm -hmm. and it's kind of one of those things that like once you're in like people see what you can do so it's like once you're in you're in right you're gonna get drafted like pretty much every single time uh mm. so no, I, I guess that doesn't apply to everyone. That's how it's worked out for me. Once I was in it, it's like I've competed in everyone since. Uh, but cool. yeah, I got drafted by Tyler this last one. That was really fun. I think we got third place. I've never, I've never finished like worse than third place, which is uh, pretty cool. And then this, actually, this last one, I was chosen to be a captain, so I got to like, you know, have the whole captain experience, draft my own team. Uh, That's cool. Yeah, it was really, really fun. Yeah, I've been, I've been. Uh part of a contract with facebook now for a while and one of the things that uh you know i i'm i'm kind of like i don't know how i feel like and i don't know how much i should say like i don't want to sound like super negative on twitch against twitch because i'm i'm not i i think there's pros and cons to both actually like for one like i get a lot of questions about like oh why aren't you streaming on twitch right now and it's like well I'm with Facebook right now, and that's you know that's great, and it's working out really well for me. But the other thing is, I'm sitting here. It's like I don't necessarily miss everything about Twitch. Now I can't speak for your channel or your chat, but I always found that like when I'm on Facebook, it's a lot less toxic for me. But I obviously am getting less viewers than I would be on Twitch. <laughs> Do you right. Know what I mean? Well, I, 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 I imagine it probably is like overall less toxic because of the whole. I'm not super familiar with Facebook, but don't you have to like sign up with your real name? Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So little, you know, Joey Badass isn't gonna come into your chat with his full <laughs> name and address. You know, like probably get a lot less flamers that way. Yeah, I I've seen it. It's been. It, I feel like I don't have a need for mods quite as much, other than to deal with like like blatant stupid stuff yeah. but it's very very rare and so i don't know man like who knows what the future is going to hold with me with these platforms like i'm i'm down for any platform at this point like i could go go any which way and and i agree with you i think twitch does a really good job with the twitch rival stuff that's been one of the cooler initiatives that i've seen them do since i've uh switched over is that they started really amping those up around the same time that i left oh okay um, 
Yeah. yeah, it was like they started doing them. It seemed like every other month or something. They, they like pretty the much have, yeah. Thing. Yeah, I think uh, I think I was in one in February, and then this last one was in April, and I'm sure the next one's going to be like next month or something. But uh, yeah, honestly, I, I know you said they started them basically right after you left. Uh, they, the Twitch rivals, like, culture itself has also changed because at first mm. it was just like a uh, – you know, oh, let's get some content creators together. Let's have some laughs. But like, any time that there's prize money involved, especially with these like egregious prizes, like I'm, dude, like, it's an Amazon funded tournament. If that tells you anything, like, there's huge prize pools. So it like over the what's months. Yeah, uh, what's been the what's been the biggest prize pool that they've done for like a league one? Uh, I think first place. Well, you get money just for being drafted at all. So like, there's pr there's participate participation, oh. and then you get like two hundred and fifty dollars for every g game that you win in groups. And then there's also bonuses for, you know, finishing in, like, top four. And then first place is, like, I mean, it's, like, $5,000 per person or something. So, you know, cool. it, it started off with, you know, hey, let's get, you know, Voy Boy and his buddies together and let's just have some fun. But, like, it's seriously gotten, like, really cutthroat to the point where, like, I don't know if you saw the teams last time, but we were basically playing against C9 out there, Nice. Like, yeah, swear to God, man, they, they had, like, yeah, sneaky and high and balls out there. Like, dude, it's no yeah, joke they all, anymore. They all showed up. Yeah, yeah, they all showed up. I, I saw that, and it, it, they did get they did get beat. It was, like, Tarzan's team. No, <laughs> hey, hey, excuse me, buddy. We those. beat them. We kicked them out. Oh, yeah. oh, you kicked them out. Were you on – was that Tarzan's team or was that – Uh, That was – I was on Tarzan's team when I was on Tyler's team. But this last one, I was uh, – Oh, got it. Yeah, I was just on my own team. I was the captain for that one. Oh, cool. Well, that's awesome. And like I said, I mean, I, I this is going to sound bad, but you know me and I'm just keeping it real with you. And I obviously put you on here because I respect you a great deal. I've seen how much you've been working uh, in the scene. And, I, and I, I keep my eyes on a lot. And one of the things I saw with you is like I personally years ago, I didn't know how good you were going to be. Like okay. I, I didn't know. And it was one of those things where it was like, because I remember you would message me from time to time, and I'd be like, ah, I don't, I don't know. And I, I feel like our times would never sync up to where we could, like, duo or anything. Yeah. And I was just kind of like, eh, I don't really know about this Ioki guy. But it seems like it seems like things are going pretty well for you. What's What's been your peak ELO's uh, past couple of years? Uh, I know you play pretty actively. I, I do play actively, but I don't typically, like, I'm not someone that just, like, hardcore grinds on my main. Like, for instance, I'm sitting around, yeah. like, 180, 200 LP right now, and I've got, like, 60. That's pretty good. I've got, like, 65 games clocked. So, like, I'm, I'm just not someone who, like, hardcore grinds solo queue. Uh, but that's a really good result for a minimal. Right. Do you know what I mean? That's yeah. That's really good for a minimal time invested. Yeah, and, and I still, like, put in the hours. I still, you know, study the game. I still keep tabs on like what's you know I keep my pulse on the on uh, what's the saying keep my finger on the pulse of the meta I know what's strong yeah, yeah, yeah. and I play you know like clash every time it's around dude it's just like and this is probably gonna lead into a whole new topic but it's solo oh, high elo solo queue is just so miserable dude I feel like I'm torturing <laughs> myself out there bro no, you so won't. like I'll play in these tourneys I'll play in these you know big money matches I'll play in clash with the boys but dude solo queue it's not even worth it anymore in my, in my eyes I know, and I honestly, I've been, I don't know if you've seen on Twitter, like, I've been hounding these Riot guys with these lists of, like, things to improve ranked, and it has got, like, I had uh, one Rioter, uh, it was actually, it's funny, it was one of the guys that interviewed me when I went to Riot. Oh. One of the guys that interviewed me years ago, and, and I always joke, like, thank God I didn't get that job, because streaming <laughs> turned out to be a lot better than I imagined, but... I, at the time, I really wanted the Riot job, right? And yeah. so when when I, I messaged whoever it was, uh, he's on my list somewhere, but uh, I sent him my list of, like, changes, and he's like, yeah, I, I'll, I'll look at it, and he followed me back on Twitter. So who knows? But basically, I have been complaining about solo queue uh, for a while. I've been complaining that Duo's still in the game at all. Um, I've been complaining that data mining's in the game. I don't know why we can't opt out of data mining. Like, I should be able to not be... Oh, uh, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm completely yeah, ignorant research. on that front. So, like, are they just, like, taking, like, private information? It's or... not that. No, no, not data mining in the sense of, like, uh, that's, that's, that's good that you don't know what I'm talking about. So it's good for the people that are listening. I'm saying that when we go into a match... I don't believe that you should be able to look up my champion history, my match oh, history. Oh, OPGG. I think that's okay. really bad. Yeah, I think that's really bad for the game long term. And I think it breeds a really – not that I give a shit too much about toxicity necessarily, mm -hmm. but the problem is it seems that people can't really help themselves. Like they should be focused on the game, 
but they're not. Yeah. Right? Like, they're focused on, like, if, if I look you up right now, and this, and I mean no offense to you specifically, but just in this example, say sure. we get into a game together, and I look you up, and you've lost, like, seven or eight in a row, right? Mm. And I see that. I'm going to go into that game with, like, a negative aura. Right. right? You're going to assume it's pretty much already over. Or worst case scenario, and I'm not going to assume that you do this, but plenty of people do, you're going to try to do something about it, like force a dodge. Yes. You know, you're going to lock in dodge. the, the oh, new new. And then it's just like I a... absolutely force a dodge. Oh, do you? <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, what I'll dodge. say is that I force dodges too, but never on purpose, bro. I don't. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. The uh, the uh, oh oh, he's here. I'm out. No, like yeah. I'm I'm saying that like I, I will happily force a dodge because it's it's in the game and they're not doing anything. Right. I'm a firm believer. Like if you're not cheating, like I'm not saying that you should cheat, but I'm saying that like as long as you're not cheating, if it's in the game. There's no, you see what I'm saying? That's Riot's job. Yeah, right? Ooh, that, that's kind of. Go, I feel like there's like a yeah. fine line to walk there, though. Okay, so like, give me a, give me an example of like what you think should be allowed. What should be allowed? Well, okay, basically, when people join a game, they shouldn't. We shouldn't see each other's names, first of all. Okay. In my opinion, we shouldn't see each other's names, and there shouldn't be duo. And if if uh, someone leaves the game after they've seen the lobby, they they just the game is gonna happen. So they could either leave and force an AFK and we all just remake in the game. or And they just take the loss, right? Right. Or they just leave in the pregame lobby and they just eat the loss right there. Yeah. I don't know. It's just such a, like, difficult, like, circular problem, right? Like, dodging mm -hmm. is a, a, a strategy, if you want to call it that, that, like, every single high elo player has to basically learn. You have to, you have to know which lobbies to dodge. And I'm not saying I'm not like putting it on the pedestal and saying like, oh, this player is really good at dodging. He knows when to dodge. But like, it's gotten so bad that like there are games that are just instant losses. So your options are to sit there and put yourself through a 35 minute only, slugfest. But they're only. Th yeah, I agree with you. But they're only going to be instant losses as often as players know that they have the option to dodge. They'll take their picks a lot more seriously if they knew that they couldn't always. Do ah, that. see, man, I That's wish, I wish I believed that. I don't, I don't know how you make people take their picks more seriously, bro. I got Newbrack out here, you know, <laughs> first time in roaming Jink support. Do I really play that game? I mean, I mean, by, but, but, but here's the thing: by that argument, by that argument, you could happily just eat the loss. To, to what? Like teach like him you, a lesson or really, something? If you really, if you really felt that like you were going to lose. Then you could just save the time. You'd still have the option to save that time. Oh, so, so okay. I see if what you you're really saying. Believe that. I don't believe, like, I've had this discussion with a lot of people. I agree with you that there are people that are miserable to play with. Mm. But I don't believe that they're to the degree that the community likes to suggest. I'm not saying that they don't exist. And I'm not saying that for the first two to three months it wouldn't be miserable. Mm -hmm. Right when everybody's going, he he, uh, let's fuck people's <laughs> day up. Right, that, right. that's going to happen, but eventually it would stabilize. Now, there's another topic entirely, and I've talked about this with other guests, so I'm not going to belabor the point. But like, the other issue is, I agree that the matchmaking system should probably just be better in general. Yeah. Um, like you know, if we report somebody for doing, like you said, the the uh, the force dodges stuff. Mm -hmm. The only reason that I would do it is because I know that they're they're not punishing it. Why wouldn't I do it? Yeah, and that like, that's the thing is that they're all connected. We've got cult, we've got like North American solo queue cultural issues, uh, compounding on top of like the inherent bad matchmaking, compounding on top mm. of this like fact that everyone knows that like dodging is a thing. So like they, we have forced dodges, we have people hand picking, cherry picking their games, uh, mm -hmm. you know, increasing dodge queue timers and leading ultimately to players like us that play less which also compounds all of those problems because the cha then the player pool is smaller and dodge timers are long or uh, q timers are longer and it's just all a mess man we need a reset yeah. we, need, we need a real reset i also said that on the list back um, to basics said, bro yeah, nuke the I whole system that, start over yep yep i said it and people go well it's gonna ruin the ladder it's like dude the ladder is ruined <laughs> yeah what do you mean? Yeah, for real. Everyone's dodging like they're playing poker. They're literally <laughs> like, they're like, I'm gonna fold. I'm gonna fold thirty games. Wait, that's such a good comparison, match. actually. It's what it is. Though. We're treating it's solo queue weird. like poker. <laughs> yeah. They're like, yeah, I got dealt Newbrack, right? Well, let me look at my hand here. Oh my God, pocket Newbrack. I'm getting the fuck out of here, right? <laughs>
<laughs> yeah. Get me the hell out of here. I'm not playing with this shit. Right. I mean, you look down, oh, double Tarzan. I'm keeping this one. Right? Yeah. Like, I'm not well, dude, one honestly, one. man, I don't mean to trash talk a recent teammate of mine, but Tarzan is about, like, as problematic as... Dude, Tarzan's unhinged, man. I don't know if you've gotten into his game recently. The dude's taking uh, champion requests, so his chat will pay him $50 oh, to play any champion in jungle. He's playing this stuff in 1,300 LP games, dude. <laughs> Oh no, my he's, God. he's he's uh, he's always one of the characters. I'm gonna try to get him on uh, at some. Oh, point he'd be a blast to have here. on. He's he's yeah, so funny, he... like unintentionally funny, man. Like everyone hates yeah. Tarzan, and I kind of hate him too. But I I I got a soft spot for him, man. He's kind of funny. I think I think he's a victim of. Uh, I shouldn't use the term victim for Tarzan. People will be like, you say he's a victim. <laughs> I would say I would say I think he's a victim of. He's he's what happens when you go too hard in competition. Yeah. Like he is basically he he has the potential to be so good oh, in terms yeah. of he is good yeah. man like and, and like oh he's incredible I'm saying good also in the people sense that, like the community will let him play like pro right and people always like hold the worst parts against him and like never really give him credit where credit is due like people always act surprised like for instance i just played in a uh, a 10k money match and i drafted tarzan and everyone was like oh my god you intentionally put tarzan on your team do you know what that's going to do to your team morale and like surprise <laughs> surprise like he was super chill like we had a great team we had an excellent team environment we were joking around with each other we took practice seriously like he's not yeah. some like in it, like monster you know what i mean like just because you know the game gets the best of him sometimes I think he's pretty monstrous if you bump into him in solo queue. Oh, oh yeah, time. solo queue. It's like, it, like it's really hard to like human. Is. Yeah, like solo queue yeah. just dehumanizes us seriously. <laughs> it really does, man. Like I've had like good friends that like I don't say a word to them. We get in solo queue and like you know I didn't get a correct roam timer off or something, and like he genuinely dislikes me from that point forward. It's like it's it's so it's so hard to like remember that there's human beings playing this game. I had one. I had one of those experiences. I feel really bad because I don't really mind Nidhog that much. Mm -hmm. But I swear to God, I, I was running into this guy. Like this was this must. I'm, I have no. I have no give a shit. Nidhog's cool as far as I'm concerned. Just to be clear. But what I'm saying is like years ago, I remember I was playing high elo, and every time I bump into Nidhog, it would, he would do some variation of just misplaying in my lane. It happened like three times in a row. Mm -hmm. Like he would show up in my lane. I'd be playing like GP or Trinomir or some shit. He would show up. He would like do a dive, like a really cocky dive, botch it, right? And, and I'm sure he normally gets away with it. I'm sure it's normally fine. And then I remember I was just like, I fucking can't stand playing with you, dude. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like the nicest guy. Yeah. And I was just like, I just couldn't handle it. I was like, I swear to God, are you doing this on purpose? Every game that I get you, it's like, it, you know, you know how it is. How you, you wait like 20 minutes to get a game. Right. It's like, this guy is sabotaging me. And finally, he was just like, why do you think I'm about to get you, man? <laughs> <laughs> We're just like arguing. And it's like years later, you just laugh about it because it's like, it doesn't mean anything. Yeah, but, but in the but in the moment so it does, mad. man. Like you've invested yeah. your entire night playing this game, and <laughs> from your perspective, someone else is you know ruining it for you. It's so it's so hard, man. Yeah, I, I genuinely, yeah, dude, tough. I I can't type anymore. Like I if I l allow myself to type, it's just gonna be all negative stuff, or or like even worse, like faux positive stuff. Like mm. you know, we throw a baron, and it's like, oh, nice try, smile. Like that's not, that's not gonna lead to a higher win rate. So I just can't type anymore, dude. Yeah, when I did the when I did the boot camp, I had everybody turn off their chat, myself included. And, Best and, piece of uh, advice any new player yeah, can follow. Yeah, it, it was it was it was beneficial. I would say pretty much everybody was happy to do that that no chat fast. It was pinglish only, right? Only use the pings to mm -hmm. communicate everything. Pinglish. Um, yeah, it's really yeah. That's the boot camp term for it. I I uh, I really like that term because it, there's so many, and you know this, um, and you've been playing with people that are really good for a while. So you know what I'm about to say. It's when people ping uh, their intent, just any idea that they have, right? They're like, oh, I'm gonna walk over here. I'm pinging. It's funny because I'm looking at one of your YouTube videos in the background here right now, and you're pinging stuff constantly, and your team's pinging stuff constantly, and you can tell that it's a real lobby. Um, but you can ping anything. You could ping a dive. You could ping your roam. You could ping your item. You could ping your back. You could ping. You, you see what I'm saying? You could yeah. ping on the way to try to like encourage your teammates to bait. Um, there's just so many techniques that come with that, and a lot of people really underestimate it and how strong it is. 
I agree. It, it really is. I mean, it's funny that you call it Pinglish because it, it actually is like a language. It's like a dialogue mm -hmm. back and forth between your teams. And just like with any language, there are people that are going to abuse it and bend it for, you know, the, the, the classic Mia ping. And sometimes, bro, all it takes is one Mia ping. Play goes wrong, and one person, even if it's a joke or something, even if it's a sarcastic yeah. Mia ping, that one person that drops a ping. My favorite thing used to do, uh, like if I'm just like playing with friends or something, I always just yeah. use the blue ping so then nobody knows who's pinging. But like it, the, the intent is very clear. Like the jungler misses smite and a single blue ping drops on the jungler's head. It's just like <laughs> and then the jungler like loses their mind trying to figure out who it was. But uh, not in rank, guys. Ping and, they, and they go, uh, if you ping me again, I swear to God. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Ping me one more time. I it's wonder like, what oh, percentage. Dude, so I would, I wonder what percentage of people that threaten that. It's like, oh, m one more Mia ping, I'm gonna leave the game. I actually wonder what percentage of people leave because I feel like they never do. <laughs> They're just as a, they need this LP just as bad as us, man. You're in the same mm. boat, bro. You're not going anywhere. You ain't better than us, dude. Yeah. You're gonna stay in here and take my my yeah, my <laughs> yeah, ping. Exactly. I'm gonna send ten at you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would say. I would say that's one of the things that, generally speaking, a lot of players, and myself included, I can't help myself. I can't. I, I struggle so hard with just as a, I mean, look at my, look what I do for a living. Like I'm coaching now all the time, right? So I get to just, I get to just lord my, you know, almost 10 years of playing this game over people and like have that, that moment of like explaining stuff and, and feeling smart when I'm not smart at like anything else, right? Right. It's like I, I get to have that, that thing. When I go, and if I'm playing on, like, a low elo account, and I see some Timmy just, like, saying some nonsense about his teammates, I just, it, it's like, it's like I, I, I desperately just want to yell at, like, every single person when they, when I know that they're wrong. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's, like, it's what this game so does tough. to us, man. It's so tough to just be like, yo, you, it's like, there's so many times when I see a guy in, like, low elo, and he's like, noob jungler, and you just want to be like, dude, you are so terrible yourself yeah. like you have no idea how bad like you can't even comprehend it like you're so dumb you don't even know you're dumb it's the dunning kruger bro it's classic i've never heard like uh i mean i'm, I'm sure you're familiar with the dunning kruger right absolutely yeah yes. yeah so i mean i've never seen a game that's like it's so fitting like it's actually just league of legends to a t and like sometimes like you know even the best coach is wrong right i'm sure you've been wrong in things that you've been oh, mad absolutely. about but like absolutely. this game just doesn't allow us to see it from that perspective because I, I don't know. There's just so many factors to it. You just never see it from other... And, like, you got five different players playing five different games, you know, playing five different strategies. And it's just hard. Mm -hmm. It's just so hard. Like, the team that wins in League of Legends is just typically, especially in solo queue, the team that can get on the same page. Like Yeah, I, that's why the Pinglish stuff is, is, is the one that I, I find. And you can chime in on this in bot lane. If you were playing... If you were playing bot lane right now and you played solo and you had to climb from support, what would you play? Uh, and I'm going to go back to that Pinglish talk here in a second, too, with this. So, I mean, mm, am I trying to enjoy myself, or am I trying to climb as quickly and you, as efficiently as LP. possible? Max LP from support. Okay, I'd probably... locking like, a couple champs. I'd probably play, three. like, Lethal Senna, possibly Brand, uh, and then once I hit, like, Platinum platinum 3, I'd probably switch to hard engage supports, like Leona, Nautilus, Blitz. Interesting. Yeah. I find Brand to be miserable, but maybe you know something that I don't. He's not great, like, you like currently in the meta, but he's just, like, you You basically just get to be, like, a budget mid laner. Like, the most obvious way... There's many ways to carry a game. Uh, Absolutely. The most obvious and straightforward is just damage. So, okay. you know, if, if, if my job... And I've made many, many, you know, unranked to diamond. I've, I've climbed using only tanks or whatever the most straightforward way is always going to be damage so if i'm purely trying to maximize lp i'd probably go like brand play play brand or like zillion even maybe or senna through my placements and then swap to what i specialize in which is you know macro roaming hard engage supports mm, yeah the ones that have historically worked the best for me on support have normally been the poke champs uh that have like those give me like you said i like that term budget mid laner mm. i think that's fair because i play Zareth a lot and like really low elos like if i if i'm doing like real low elos you just go i i feel like i just go Zareth. yeah and then i'll just get like you know 15 kills and i'll be doing this wag thing where i swing my mouse around while i ult like <laughs> it doesn't really matter you know what right. i mean so i'm gonna i'm gonna have so much damage it doesn't make a difference but i do find in smurf queue it doesn't feel like those champs work 
like if, if I play if I go support and I try to play like a Zareth or something like it might go okay but in a real game like you said platinum or higher it feels like the, the team with like the like the helicopter the bard or the because what did you say? You said Nautilus Leona. Yeah, um, J just off the top of my head. Be Rel would actually probably be better now that I think about it. I think Rel's a bit mm. stronger than Nautilus. But yeah, that kind of stuff. Uh, you know, people, it's hard. It's hard because as a support streamer, I get people in my chat every single day saying like, oh, how do you climb a support? And it's just like such a like bad cookie cutter question. Like it's just fundamentals. Mm -hmm. The same way you climb in every single role. Fundamentals, right? Like you do the correct thing over and over and over. You practice it. When it goes wrong, you understand and teach yourself why it went wrong. But like people don't want mm -hmm. that. People think that there's like some secret champion that like a, all the other support streamers that they probably asked this stupid ass question to like didn't tell them. <laughs> so like honestly, <laughs> dude, I've gotten so frustrated to the point where like I seriously get that question like five times a day. And it's just become like a meme within my community because now I'm just saying full AP Quinn. So, yeah. so, so they say, so how do, how do you climb and a support? I'm kind of that guy though. Yeah. Like, I'm legit. I'm kind of that guy. The, the, and the reason I say that is because I definitely have moments where I look at bot lane right now and it just seems like anytime I went down there, I just feel like, holy shit, if I don't play, if I don't play some like killer poke champ, yeah, like I'm just mad. To clarify, I, I, I said full yeah. AP Quinn as like a. I, I don't feel like answering this question for the fiftieth time today. Oh, no, no, yeah, no, like not an actual pun, suggestion. No, I got the pun. I yeah. I'm just saying that I'm just saying that for me, honest to God, like I've been down there now multiple times, and I I mean I saw like okay, so I coached Ninja on one of my videos recently. Oh, um, and he's playing he yeah uh, he's playing AD carry, and he's doing his thing, and and. You know, for me, my AD carry options seem so limited. But all the other roles, for anything outside of bot lane, I can give you a, a ton of different strategies. Like I could, I could go right off the uh, right off the rip. I could be like top lane. I, I could pull up my banjo and say, "Well, you play gangplank, play Trinamir, play every Fiora, <laughs> play this shit, play this shit, play Shen, play Nasus, play this." Right? Right. But if I go down to bot lane, I'm just like, well, for AD carry, you can play maybe Tristana. Yeah. Uh, to get a good win rate, maybe Ezreal, and just hide under your tower while your team ints. Oh, like, dude, I hate Ezreal players, man. I hope no one followed your advice on that one. I I hope that you have not weird. spawned another Ezreal player into the world. It's weird, though, because I I know some of my Ezreal's pretty good. But <laughs> what I'm saying is it, it's he's good in a in a solo queue environment because he never – because you're a support main. You actually know how to play support. Right, and this goes both ways. You're gonna get the Ezreals that suck dick, and then you're gonna get the Leonas that slob knob too. Yep, that yep. like don't go in. Yeah, I, and so I, what yeah. happens is, yeah, you're like, well, if I play Ezreal, this has always been my argument because my highest win rate climbs on bot lane solo have been Ezreal every time. That's if I tried crazy. anything else other than, other than, yeah, I, I swear to God, I did it on a stream last year. I played the diamond with like 70% win rate Ezreal, and I was bad in the beginning because I didn't know what I was doing. Mm. I was like really bad. Like I was not winning, and I wasn't winning in like silver and gold in the beginning. And then I started figuring out what my play style was, and what it wound up being was just like don't die. I feel like recommending people to play Ezreal is like recommending people. When I get that question, how do you climb a support? That would be like me recommending people to play Yumi. Like yes, it is. It's it is a safe champion, and you're always going to be like useful, I guess, in some sense. But like your agency is like, I don't know. I don't know. It's rough. It, 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 I I found it. I found it's actually. It's better than you would think, but again, it's like you said. It's like I recommend it, but it's like don't try this at home. Yeah. It's the same thing. Like I play, you know, I play shit like Gangplank before. I played shit like Jace. I've obviously played dumb shit, easy stuff like like Maokai Jungle. Mm. It's like the first season I ever made Challenger was I was playing Maokai Jungle. This is like season seven or six or whatever it was. I was playing Maokai Jungle as a backup, right? When I was putting Jungle, and it was working, and it was just like, I, yeah, I'll play brain dead stuff if it makes sense right right but Ezreal was just always safe but you're right you're right it's not it's not something that you fist pump lock and the majority of the players that play Ezreal they don't understand that it's like he's got to stack his passive cues and he's got to actually push into people and then it was like when I was coaching Ninja on the and on the YouTube video it was like I was explaining to him like yeah we played like a bitch for 15 minutes now you've got to actually loosen up once you get your items like you've got to really start pumping on people instead of just chilling yeah right? and that's just all that stuff is kind of outside of a lot of people's play pay grades otherwise i just say tristana but my point of this whole rant 
and not to take over so much airtime, my point of this whole rant was just like, I don't know good support champs. Like, and that I think that's where that question comes from, is I just don't feel like I can get high win rates on support very easily anymore, and I don't have a big list. Yeah, it's a it's a it's a weird role, honestly. Like honestly, like the meta right now is actually favoring my style of playstyle, like pretty heavily heavy roams. Mm. You know, play for jungle, secure those crabs, be the first one to rotate, and like have high agency by being like the first one to pull the trigger. Uh, but mm. very very soon, I'm pretty sure that Riot is like forcing an enchanter meta. So it'll be interesting to see like players like me and Alicopter if that takes a toll on us. Right, because like I'm pretty mm. sure Riot's like trying hard to push like Lulu and Moonstone and Shirelia's like to the forefront of the bot lane meta, where your impact isn't as obvious. Um, you know, when I when I'm asked for AD carry, like oh who's your favorite AD carry to support? I like playing with Tristana's because the impact is very obvious. It's very immediate. Um, you don't mm. really need like an enchanter. You just kind of go. You just kind of go and you make the plays, which that's always been like my strength as a player is. I see people when they're out of position, and I'm good at like capitalizing on it. But uh, mm. it's harder to do that when you're playing Lulu, right? <laughs> like you can ping that someone's out of position, but you're gonna have to rely on other people to do stuff for you. And I think that that's a big part of League of Legends is you want to minimize how much you want to rely on other people. Uh, and that sounds kind of weird coming from a support player that plays Leona that doesn't really do that much damage. Um, mm. Well, I guess it's debatable whether people think she does a lot of damage, but yeah. she's not going to do as much damage as an Aurelia or a Tristana or a Brand or whatever. Um, but uh, yeah, I kind of forgot where I was going with that. No, no, this was good, and I want to I want to go back to what you were saying about how you uh, communicate your intent with like the pinging stuff that we were talking about earlier. Mm -hmm. This was a, this was why I say I was going to go back to this because I think it's really important. Um, one of the things that I found with bot lane, and I was telling you the story about how I was like struggling initially to climb with Ezreal. Like I have good mechanics, but I wasn't figuring out the flow. Like I have a flow on most of my champs. If I'm, you know, if I'm playing GP top, I know that I just have to chill till, you know, Triforce spike in level 13, and then I can loosen up. And so I like to play those, those farming styles. But the thing was, no matter what I was doing, I just wasn't making it work in bot lane until I started pinging my supports to do things. Oh, yeah, yeah. That was actually yeah, the yeah. thing that turned the tide. And, I, and, and it started clicking. It's like, yeah, they just don't know because they, don't, they actually don't have a play in mind. And you manually, you are responsible for – even though you're the AD carry, you're responsible for pinging to your teammates, and it's – worse in bot lane than any other role pinglish yeah. is actually the most important skill i think that like separates if like you used helicopter as an example and i'm and i'm watching you ping people right now helicopter is one of the kings of doing that shit yep he'll ping the shit out of you and that's good because you know it's like i'm coming and you just see like 10 pings like a motherfucker i guess i gotta go yeah <laughs> yeah no I, yeah i mean that's a really really important skill because it just goes back to what i said earlier dude like it's the team that's on the same page especially in solo mm, queue yeah you're right it's just yeah, five dude five good. people even if it's the wrong play bro five people doing the wrong thing is going to turn out way better than like one or two people doing the quote-unquote right thing as long as like yeah. you're all on the same page with it if That's you go ape when strong, I go, you're going to win. Yeah, ape strong, bro. Ape strong together. Ape, ape strong. Yeah, I've seen some plays that have just been head scratchers, but everybody committed to it. Yeah. It's like it's like every, every so often, and you know this play, every so often in high elo, you'll get that random level one dive under the tower. Yep, yep. And you're just like, those kids were committed. Yeah, they were ready. <laughs> they like pull and, it off. And we weren't ready, so we were on our back foot. That's another thing. Ugh. Like the person that like shoots first in solo queue has the advantage always. Like sometimes you're going to look that. like an idiot because you're going to dive and you're going to be completely alone and it's just like what the what the hell was that guy doing? Like even if you're on the receiving end, like you get dove and like they didn't even like put a scratch in you. You're just like what were they doing? Well, at least they were doing something, man. They weren't just like waiting yeah. for the LP to appear for them like you know what i mean like at least they took action yeah the person that takes action has such a huge huge advantage in solo queue that's that's honestly it's so funny that you use the term agency because i've been hounding that term uh in the past like couple months um i just feel like there's so many players in my coachings that really need that like swift go nad kick of like hey man we need you. like i'm like yelling at clients lately i'm like look dude like you need to fucking go like I i'm not gonna sit here and watch this all day like you paid yeah. me money and i want you to like 
I would, I've, I've told clients, and, and I've gotten bitched at YouTube comments sometimes, because I've told clients to damn near int, because I just got so tired of them standing there. It's like, please <laughs> go fight so that you can understand what it feels like. Yep. You know what I mean? Like, you just need to know, because you, if you never fight, you'll never learn anything. And so many guys are just like, but what if the opponent does this, this, this? And it's like, well, yeah, if the opponent played perfect, he wouldn't be in friggin' bronze. Right, so. exactly. And when the play goes wrong, that's such a good learning experience. Like, you dive... And then you like you analyze why the dive didn't work, right? Like, oh, mm. did I not account for the fact that he had flash and heal still up? Did you know I go when my ADC mm. just used her cooldowns and she wasn't ready to output damage? Like, it's so much faster, dude. Just go like uh, there's a very unpolitically correct way of saying it that I won't say it, but you can go full monkey, mm. right? You can go full yeah. monkey and and learn the game at an accelerated rate, or you can fiddle faddle, not ever take action, just sit around and hope that your team is better and you've won the coin flip and like you'll win fifty percent of your games for the rest of your life, right? I feel like even enchanters, because it was funny you were talking about enchanters earlier, and I hate enchant like I've had enchanter clients and it's always just like it's gonna sound bad. LS said something similar, and I'm just gonna parrot sim like the the the, the line. Mm -hmm. It's like. If there's an enchanter player in plat three, they're really like gold three. Yeah, I, I've, like, I've, I've heard that is. mindset. And like, I kind of agree. I mean, people apply that to like the support role in general. But also, <laughs> League of Legends is designed in a way that like support players are never going to believe that rhetoric, right? In the same way that like, I personally yeah. think that junglers are elo inflated, not because their role is easy, but because it's so insanely powerful and has been for the last 10 years. So you're always going to have mm. people that like, you know, look yeah, down on noticed, others. You noticed though that I didn't say, I didn't say engage supports and I didn't say right. like carry. Yeah. I said specifically enchanter supports. Now, if you're playing some shit like, uh, you know, uh, I'm going to offend some people, but I really don't care. <laughs> if you're playing some shit like Sona, if you're playing some shit like Yumi, right? Like, I know immediately, like, when I get a coaching in one of those, I'm not even trying to shame anybody. I just know that they're going to be worse at the game mechanically because of what you just said. They don't even have to know. They don't even have to know what it's like to – they just sit, like you said, back foot. They yeah. just sit back there and just float around, and they'll they'll climb. It, it's It's actually quite interesting. Because the, the, those supports do so well when a game stalls out. That's why so many of clients are, like, in gold and platinum. And like I said, they're, they're basically a, a full league ahead at, on average. They're, like, a full league ahead. If I put them on any other role, they will literally look like maybe even two leagues. They'll literally look just so lost. Yeah. That, that they've never played the game in their life. Right. Because they just don't, yeah. like, they don't know so much of the game. And, like, no yeah. one role or, like, archetype of, like, champion that you play is going to teach you the entire game, which, are why, which is why I actually do think it's, like, a pretty good idea to, like, play the other roles occasionally. Like, at least pick up jungle, like, a couple times per season and understand why your jungler is inting for the bottom crab, right? Because I, mm. I'll be honest, dude, like, once the crab meta rolled around, I never understood why junglers fought for crab. I genuinely just yeah. didn't. I was just like, go for something else, man. And and I still <laughs> do, like, kind of hold that belief because I, I was on the the Twitch Rivals team with the Tarzan. We had a coach. Yeah. Uh, actually, it was what uh, my jungler was named Hyper, who was, like, the rank 8 on North American server or something. He has apparently a bad tendency to go for crab and our coach literally like did the math and like showed mathematically how it's like still just as good to go for the gromp so like if it's not a play good play like if your bot lane doesn't have prio don't int for the gromp or don't int for the crab but uh the point of what i was saying is that like i just never understood why they did it at all and then i played a couple games of jungle and i'm like oh my god this is like the crab is very, very important. And, bro, <laughs> I have been a crab warrior ever since. Swear to God, I will lose an entire game for the crab, bro. It's I'm not even the jungler. Yeah, I'm there, yeah, dude. No, I, I got you. And it's it's funny, though. It's funny you say it because a lot of a lot of my time has been spent over the years trying to do random climbs with different roles. And, like, being able to kind of see that, that, that picture is so nice for the game. And it's so good for empathy to a certain extent because mm. when people bullshit you, you can feel so much more confident in your decisions, right? Yeah. Like when you see when you see your jungler, like he secures like a full clear plus a crab, and then he tries to like force the second crab because he wants to feel like the biggest peen ever, mm -hmm. right? And he, he wants, wants to double to, like, crab him, man. That's like to, yeah, exactly. that's the pimp like, slap of the one. jungle role, dude. Like you asserted yeah. your dominance. <laughs> it is. They all it's want literally, it. 
Yeah, it's, it's, it's literally like you took their girl. Like you took their girl, and you're not giving her back. <laughs> you took their crab, you took man. Yeah, you took that's even crab. worse than taking their girl, dude. Junglers value crab over everything. You ever see that guy in solo queue named Mr. Steal Your Gromp? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I love some of this shit that people come up with. But it's like, it's true, though. There's, there is a lack of empathy for the jungle role. I would say, though, that as much as I dislike... Because I, I'm gonna I'm gonna use two points actually. I'm gonna first I'm gonna side with the junglers, and I'm gonna say they get bitched at the most, bar none. Oh, for sure, hundred percent. Bar none. It's not even close. Yeah. I, and, and you and it, it, again, that was one of those things. Like I learned like a year or so ago. I did like a jungle climb. I was like, these motherfuckers blame you for everything. Yeah. Like they just they just blame you. They literally, it's it's the memes are just dead on. But the other thing that I find interesting about junglers in particular is like you said, it's been one of the strongest. Or it's it's the strongest role. It's been the strongest role and the most uh, – when we talk about agency, the only argument might be sometime, sometimes this year you had stuff that was like roaming supports that, that eke out in high elo the jungler, right? Right. But ultimately, it's pretty much been jungle town for, for years and years. Mm. And the best ex explanation that I've come up with is it's like these junglers, a lot of them had – when they solved the jungle before anybody else – Right, you'll have these. Uh, I'm not even going to say any names. You have like these OG junglers that have solved the jungle before anybody else for years and years and years. So imagine, imagine just like finding a champion that gets you an 80% win rate when solved. One of those champions, like when when you get to high elo. So like one of those examples would be TF Blade back when Jax had uh, whatever the hell that atrocious item combo was with the stupid stun on like a two. Oh a yeah, Shojin Blade of Shojin or so something. So TF Blade's yeah. an amazing laner, right? He's an incredible laner, yeah. so I'm not trying to diminish his accomplishments. All I'm saying is that his accomplishments were certainly enabled by this bullshit that for, he had for access sure. to. Yeah. And that's what people talk about ELO inflated. Well, jungle has been that way for a long time. So imagine, you know, season five, season six, if you figured out how the jungle worked, there was no information on that shit, really. There mm. was no, like, you didn't know what was going on. But guys were just crushing everybody else because they didn't have to lane, they didn't have to do any of that. They just had to, they just had to solve that system, that formula. They get like one or two champions, and they were getting like 80, 85 percent win rates. It happened all the time back in the day. Yep. Now the roles balanced a lot better, but they still, they still matter, just not as much, right, as they used to. Yeah, and they, they definitely, and it's so weird, like it's so insane, like how intrinsically tied to the entire balance of the game that the jungle is. Because you mentioned mm -hmm. earlier, like in super high elo, roaming supports were like possibly like the strongest role, but they were only the strongest role because they enabled the jungle, yeah, like better than any yeah. other position. It was just, it's yeah. just insane. Yeah, it's very circular. And I would say, I would say the reason that junglers turn out to be so toxic is it's like, imagine that. Here's a good example. Imagine that you and I and maybe a couple other guys, like, like we're just chilling, right? And we're like, okay, we're all living together for some reason. We're in a bunker. Maybe the apocalypse hit, right? Zombie apocalypse. Uh, okay, this is. Die. Are we still playing League of Legends, bro? Like, yeah, yeah, what, yeah, what yeah, is bear this? With me, bear with me. This okay. Is my creative. I, I, I really, I moonlight as a creative. <laughs> all right. So my point is, we're we're in the apocalypse now. We live in a bunker, okay? And and breakfast every morning for some reason. I just keep showing up with eggs, bacon, and toast, and you guys get like the Matrix slop. Remember the Matrix movie where they roll up with like the Matrix slop, and they're like, it has all the vitamins and minerals. It literally just looks like shitty oatmeal. Okay, okay. So you guys keep getting shitty oatmeal, and I keep eating like egg, bacon, eggs, and toast. You bastard. Right? Yeah, and then eventually, eventually you guys figure it out, right? Maybe we're eating, maybe we're separated and we're in different rooms or whatever. You guys figure it out, and you're like, hey. We should each eat some of the slop and then split the rest of the stuff together, right? Well, you guys are going to all be happy and and cool with it, but I've been eating bacon, eggs, and toast for years. Oh, okay. I, I'm, this is so, coming yeah. together. The analogy is yeah. coming together. All right. Yeah, so that's why <laughs> yeah. if you've ever wondered why it feels like junglers are just whiny, They're entitled, ungrateful, man. Ungrateful. If you've ever wondered, it's because they were used, the good ones, were used to 80% win rates on their own. They didn't have to do shit, right? They didn't have to they didn't have to lane. They could just systematically just path and own people that were just none the wiser. And eventually it caught up to them because Riot's not going to just let one role just be that dominant forever. I mean, there's just in, there's educational content, there's the pro scene, there's this, there's that. Yeah. Eventually they're going to figure it out.
So essentially, junglers got their bacon, eggs, and toast taken away, and they've got to have kind of reasonable win rates like everybody else, but their win rates are still better than everybody else. Yeah. Most of the time. So, yeah, that's my that's my long-winded way of saying I think they just so don't realize how good they had it before. Yeah. I want to hear your long-winded way of saying jungle gap because that was a <laughs> that was a beautiful analogy, man. I'd love to hear another. <laughs> It's late. I normally don't do these <laughs> this late at night. Uh, so yeah, my like I said, my creative juices were flowing. But I, I I really feel that way. I feel like that's where it comes from, and I I understand why they get so mad uh, when they're you know when they're getting blamed all the time. But they just they have a normal human role now. Yeah, you know, just like everybody else. They're... Everybody else has to deal with like goofy shit happening, and they have to play even more perfect. Yeah, they're um, they're down they're is. down here with the rest of us now, man. <laughs> Yeah, I've never heard like I, I I very rarely have seen like mid diffs and and ADC diffs. Oh, support ga diffs. support gaps pretty. Um, uh, well, actually, it's we're usually lumped together as bot diff, even though there's like so much more going on <laughs> behind the scenes. Because like I said, if the jungler loses the crab, even though like I am literally unable to rotate, I'm under my turret. I may not even be level two yet, bro. It's a bot diff yeah. if they didn't get the crab. Like, there's just so yeah. much going on in the game, which is why. What we were talking about earlier, you gotta you gotta play these other roles. If if you can't like, if you can't understand from their perspective without playing the role, then you just have to play the role because you'll you'll be you'll improve at your own role so much like so mm -hmm. much and so rapidly if you just understand like what the other roles are going through and why they are making the common mistakes they are making from your perspective. Like it's just crazy. Like there's an infinite amount to learn in this game. Like yeah, there's one there's one um, just to flip it to the other side of the map. The, the one thing you have to learn in high elo top lane to kind of cross that threshold from like i would say diamond you know mid diamond to like high elo that i found over the years is learning when to give up a tower before you get dope bot laners have to learn this too yeah. but i feel like top laners have to learn it even worse because they don't even have the fucking vision half the time right they don't even know so they need to they, to, they need to see know. it coming like a little bit yeah, of an, an advance to, yeah they need to like know they that's why i always give top laners the credit for being like it's probably the hardest role in the game um in terms of like playing through it in high elo because you're facing like fighting game gods up there and mm -hmm. then you're also getting like terrible dives that are like god tier dives like elise at least renekton like you just have to like you have to know to just walk away from shit and right. that's like a really tough thing mid don't have to learn that mid mid never has to learn that mid might get dove rarely from like a really gross like chickens you know yeah. Elise cocoon flash thing sometimes but like Top is the one where it's like, yeah, they could just, they could just run you over. Like you face, you face Trinomir with Ghost Ignite, and there's a, a Jarvan behind him or a Volley Bear behind him. It's like you just lose. Yeah, and I think something right. that doesn't get talked about a lot, the difference between like diving top lane and diving mid lane, is that diving mid lane is so, so much like less common because it's so much harder. Look how close the turrets are in mid lane. Like if you dive yeah. just a little bit too far, you're literally tanking two turrets. Like the distance yeah. between the uh, the turrets and top lane is just like it, you don't have to be as coordinated. And like you said, you got to have so much foresight with the type of champions that are played up there. You're probably yeah. not going to see it coming. The other one is those two entrances of mid. Yeah. Mid laners and the mid laners are normally super mobile, and they can just hop. Uh, the classic example is like. Every time you you go to dive a talent in mid, oh my god! Yep, he's Try gone. Try diving a talent in mid lane, Jesus Christ! You might as well just buy a lottery ticket, and then you'll have a better chance of killing him. Yeah, because there's just no way. And because you know he's gonna hop the wall, you know he's gonna hop a tower, he's gonna go invisible and run around and yeah, it's a come mess. and burst you. And yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's like, and then the support shows up as, as you're diving him. It's like Jesus Christ! And up in top lane, no one's helping you, buddy. Yeah, you're, you're on your own. <laughs> <laughs> you might get Good a Soraka luck, ult if your support's like not asleep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you might. Otherwise, otherwise you just go next because it's it's over. I would say uh, I would say those types of examples are the ones that you know. To go back to what you're talking about, it's it's like you just don't have any visibility on until you get up there a bit. Mm -hmm. It's like why is my top laner just? He's just getting he's just dying over and over again it's like yeah because he's literally there's an elise sitting in his brush 
and when he comes back to lane, he can't ward it or he insta dies. Yep. But you, in the bot lane, from the ADC's perspective, you've got those blinders on. You're like, I'm up 20 CS, bro. Just let me carry. Like you don't <laughs> see all these things that are going on. Like you got, you got to have some. Uh, would that be empathy or sympathy? Sympathy. I think it's both. For, for like other lanes that you don't have like the whole story. No, yeah, we definitely. Every, I think everybody could use a little empathy in league. Oh, for sure. Right, and then and then sympathy when you see a guy getting molested and not in the hot teacher way in top lane. Yikes! You know, like <laughs> yeah. he's just, yeah, he's getting the sweaty uncle, like, and and that's yeah. not, and and that's just not okay. Like no one, no one wants to deal with that up there. And, and then you know, when we're on this topic of uh, getting dove, not not hot teacher molestation. Okay. But when we're on the. I'm gonna get this spot. I'm gonna get this podcast canceled. Yeah, for real. <laughs> Already, we just have to get far out. <laughs> no, but I would say, um, I would say that one of the things that I, I really wanted to bring you on here for, in general, is just basically what you view the meta to be right now, and do you do you feel like you obviously said that your champions are being represented in the bot the bot lane right now. Uh, do you like the direction that Riot's been going in terms of pulling so many mages down there? Because it definitely feels like mages are, are starting to kind of become a thing of the past in mid lane. Yeah, um, I've kind of got two answers for it because, like, m well, there's me as, like, a competitive player, right? And then there's me as, like, mm -hmm. a content creator. I always like it when new champions are, like, opened up in new positions. Like, for instance, mm -hmm. I like playing the, the Nautilus jungle just became meta, and I'm sure a bunch of people are not going to like that. But as someone who's very experienced on Nautilus and enjoys that champion, I love playing it in the jungle. Uh, so yeah, I'm always going to like it when new mages come down there. And then... Uh, as for like how it affects the meta and stuff, to be honest, the champions that I play are good against squishy mages in the bot lane. So it's kind of just like more free wins. Uh, mm. But... Uh, I, I think Riot can be really, really random and, like, ADHD about, like, the champions that they just, like... I, I don't know how they choose which champions to go where sometimes. Uh, mm. And I don't think they're very good at deciding it either. Like, they, they went to extreme lengths to say that, like, Seraphine is a, a mid lane first and foremost. And then, like, they've... Like, for instance, they just buffed it today. And they buffed the shield on her. And they're like, yeah, this is really going to help Seraphine mid lane. And, like, they just don't have a very good handle on, like, how those changes affect the game. So I don't think that all these, like, new mages that or, or, or really any change that they make to the game is typically healthy for the game in long term because I just don't think they're very good at balancing the game at all. Um, really? Yeah. You don't think they're good at balancing the game? No. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of on the fence on this one. Um, I don't know if I think they're incredible at balancing the game. But I don't, but I don't think that they are. They're as bad as you make it sound. But yeah. Why? I want to hear why though, because obviously well, it's a podcast. I, I will. I will that. cut them a little bit of slack. League of Legends is probably the hardest game I can think of to balance. Uh, not mm -hmm. just in terms of like objectivity, but like, it's League of Legends. It's always going to be a very emotionally charged game. No one wants to see their champion nerfed. Like I, I know that I'm prone to biases because everyone's prone to biases. Leona just got nerfed today. Uh, I feel like I've got a pretty level head on my shoulder when I say things like, you know, Leona doesn't need a... Well, okay, bad example, because Leona did need a nerf, uh, and I'm glad that she did get one. Uh, mm, let me let me start this answer over. Okay, what was the question, Nice? <laughs> so, th throw, throw me another one. <laughs> throw me a different question. No, same same question. Let me let me go again. <laughs> no, this would be, Round no, two. I think it's... I I think it's fair though what you what you're getting at though because you're saying like you had a bias yes and you're like a little sad that that Leona got nerfed yeah and so you're like, so well, basically maybe, they, maybe she did deserve a nerf yeah That's basically what you're getting at. what I'm saying is they have to base they have to balance the game in terms of like objectivity and also in a way that doesn't piss everybody off to the point where they stop playing the game right so no one mm -hmm. ever wants to see their main champion nerfed uh, but. And it's really hard to detach yourself from those biases because you have the whole picture of what it's actually like to play Leona. Everyone says Leona's broken. I actually know, like, I, I know the counterplay for Leona, like, the back, back of my hand, right? If I'm against a Leona, she does not look very broken. Uh, but mm. the majority of people think, you know, they just see this unstoppable CC monster that terrorizes their games because they don't know. They haven't played 30,000 games of Leona like I have, right? So no yeah. one ever wants their champion nerfed because they have the whole story behind it. 
and they know the you know counterplay and stuff like that so you know it is a hard juggling act that riot has where they have to balance the game in a place where it's like you know esport ready and mm. also to keep it fresh and interesting you know keep new players coming in and old players returning to see oh my new champ my favorite champion got a buff let's check it out uh, stuff like that. So I, I do give Riot a lot of slack. I give them a wide berth in terms of, like, how hard of a job they have to balance this game. But in terms of, like, the actual the quality of the balancing, now I think almost every single change they make is either too late, too little, too big, you know, misguided, uh, short-sighted. It, it, the list mm. just goes on and on and on, honestly. I... I'm intrigued by that. I could see it. I could see it that way. I'm more and I'm less annoyed with how they balance the actual game right now. I'm pretty happy with where the game's at, and I'm generally not too annoyed with stuff that I'm seeing. I think if anything, I think I'm just more pissed off with how solo queue looks personally. I could really give a shit about that. I don't think the balance is that bad, mainly because like what's an egregious case? Like Give me an egregious case. I think it's pretty hard to give me like really egregious cases right now. Sure. Give me some. I, I, give me some I, egregious balanced cases. Okay, I can give you two examples, and they're kind of different sides of the same coin. Uh, okay. Viego existing as a champion is, I just think, the most hilariously unbalanceable wreck of a champion. And okay, I, I, I'm very, very vocal about it. And I, I'm very harsh about it because I'm actually friends with the designer of the champion, Riot August. Every single time I get a chance, I tell him, "You messed up, bro. You messed up." Every like this champion mm. is a this champion's a monstrosity, buddy. Uh, okay. But so. But why? Okay, he can just do too much. I think that they're going for the cool factor, the cool one shot factor over the actual health of the game. And I understand that like that's kind of how the game has has been for years and years now. And League of Legends is at the state where, like, it's been out for 10 years. You have to outdo your last champion, right? I understand that. But I, I really think it's been detrimentally affecting the actual balance and fun factor of the game because we've been focusing on making champions that are fun to play as and never and never fun to play against. And that, that balance, it, that's, once again, it's a hard balance to strike because typically people derive fun from doing well and killing things, and the person on the other end of that is getting killed and probably not having fun. But uh, I think they've just swayed that balance a little too much in terms of, like, these champions have, like, 15 actions per second. They outperform all these old champions. They mm. look cool. They, they don't have mana resources. They have low cooldowns. You know, this guy can turn into this guy. This guy gets his ultimate. This guy gets all your items. This guy steals your girlfriend. Like, it's just a mess, man. Like, <laughs> Okay, I see. I see. <clears throat> I see where you're going with, like, new champs being, like, needlessly flashy i mm. get that i guess i and there are there are times where i agree with you i could get i i could think of a couple that have annoyed me over the years diego isn't actually one that that annoys me too badly and i'm not quite sure why it doesn't annoy me too badly yet i think the ones that really pissed me off uh and i don't uh, it's got it's got to be a collie yes. It's gotta be a collie. <laughs> yes. yes? <it> is. <laughs> I do it. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking a collie. This thing comes out, and I still to this day I hated her. I hated this design before it was reworked, anyways. And I feel and Aurelia was weird because I didn't hate Aurelia, and then they did the same thing with Aurelia. Yeah. That is the one. Those two. If I had an egregious, because it's interesting, you talk about balance. I wasn't sure, like you're talking about champion balance mainly, not so much. Uh, well, it, it like item balance. It's or... all kind of like symbiotic, right? Because like you got to yeah. balance the items in a way that they can keep up with these champions. So I just don't think it's like a very healthy relationship that they built. Because like I think Viego is impossible to balance. How are you ever going to balance a champion that can turn that is strong when ahead? because you can snowball and get resets, and is strong when behind, because let's say you get a lucky kill, and now you have the enemy team's items. Like, I just don't think that's ever a balanceable situation. And that's just kind of like the tip of the iceberg. I won't, I won't use your entire podcast to complain about Viego, but... No, 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 yeah. no. I actually don't mind it, um, because I complain a lot myself. But my point is, uh, the reason why I, I'm pressing you on this is because... I'm just curious mainly, and yeah. I, I, like I said, most of my complaints aren't actually with the balance of the game. Like I said, I, I hate Akali, I hate Aurelia. Every time I see her flying around, like if I see Aurelia farm, I get mad. Yeah. Like when I see her literally farm minions at like Mach 10. Yeah, it's yeah, it's like, like Dragon Ball Z there, style. 
And then I get so pissed, like, yeah, irrationally pissed. Me too. And like I'm starting to see it more and more. And like in every uh -huh. single new champion, and I'm out here playing Leona. Like I've got a one second stun that I that I have to compete with those things. And like <laughs> those cha those champions are like all very flashy and high skill ceiling and all all that stuff like that. But I don't know, man. It's it's a hard it's a hard balance to strike. I'm. I'm getting heated, bro. I don't want. I don't want to get. I don't want to spend my night getting mad at Riot again. I've got all day long yeah, tomorrow to do that. Yeah, I feel <laughs> you. I'd say. I'd say overall, <clears throat> I'm with you. There's a couple. There's one. Uh, the Yumi case. Uh, the Yumi case is definitely one that's recent that I'll give you. I'll give you a nod. I don't really understand this champion. I think this champion makes it so the entire lobby has to like play around pay attention. It. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I feel that way also. I had the similar issue and similar complaint with the Tarek Master Yi synergy. That would be a good example of something a little too late. Oh my gosh, um, yes. I can't... Yeah, that would be one and, and then, for sure. And it's like, I don't know if it's just a case of like incompetence or apathy, because it's hard to tell these days. Because like, you know, people have been, com people complained about, um, I can't remember what that strategy is called. Tarek Yi. It was called funnel. Yeah, funneling. People have been complaining about funneling for like, two and a half years and like yeah they took like itty bitty steps towards fixing it and then they finally were just like they finally made the fix that is mm. you know going to and when it was already when it was already pretty much gone it's right funny that you forgot the term funneling you obviously didn't get funneled on enough oh uh, no I, you. I did once is too much bro like that that strategy <laughs> is unbelievable it's just like stuff like that so like it's almost not even like game balance at that point it's like game design like what are they actually allowing to exist in their games because it's mm. no like you said you got a yumi in your game you're no longer playing league of legends you're now playing is the yumi dead yet right we're playing whack-a-mole it's not even the same yeah. game anymore and i think yeah, it does get weird yeah and it's the same thing with viego if you don't if you don't and people are always like oh just focus him just cc him make sure he dies first okay well that's not always like feasible sometimes you can't focus the viego first and then he's running a train on your team and it's too late <laughs> because i used my one second stun on someone else god forbid right god forbid no i love it i i uh i appreciate this talk i think i think there's there's a lot there I, if I had to, if if I give my opinion, I actually think personally that my biggest biggest whines come from a lack of a real competitive solo queue. Yeah. And that data mining stuff, I think is to me is way more important to the longevity of the game. I think this is, and I I use a lot of poker analogies on my stuff because I just I really feel like League is so close to poker. It's unbelievable. Like it's unbelievable. Really. We all get really emotional. Yes. We all get really emotional and feel like the world's out to get us. If you play <laughs> poker for like, for like a couple months straight online, you would understand. Like you just, you you tie your self worth to whether or not you're winning. Yeah. For a lot of people, they do that. And poker is damaging, right? Except with poker, you you don't lose just LP, you lose money. Right, like so it's start, even worse. Yeah, you start like you go you go you go online just like there's educational content for league. There's educational content for poker. Like people will pay top dollar for poker content too because they really care, right? Like they, they care yeah. about their LP, they care about their money in poker, and they care about being good at poker. Well, the thing is in poker, a lot of that a lot of the data is hidden now on poker sites. You don't get to just mine shitty players in poker. It's for the protection of the players. It's for the good of the game. Yeah, that, right? that leads if to a much, much, in, much higher integrity, yeah. Yes. If every time I log into PokerStars, I've told this story before on this podcast, but if every time I log into PokerStars and I'm a bad player, I'm a whale, right, and I just want to play poker, but every time I sit down at the table, everybody knows that I'm bad at poker and wants to sit down at my table and literally just stalk me every hand. Right? Oh, That's not yeah. good for the it, game. Yeah, it's, it's changed the entire environment. It's changed the whole game. Exactly. So with data mining, yeah, you've got trolls. Everybody's got them. It's just like poker, right? We could mm. get dealt some Nubrax. We could get dealt some Tarzans. We could get dealt some Nieces or some Iokis. doesn't really matter. Everybody's going to get them roughly evenly if we're all putting in volume, a.k.a. games, a.k.a. hands, and that analogy just keeps running, right? It's very easy to, to tie the two together. Yeah. Um, and that's where I'm at is because I'm just like – you said it at the start of this podcast. You're like, man, I just don't think – Ranked matters that much. How long have you been playing League? Uh, too long, man. Like I'd say probably seven or eight years at this point. I was actually just looking Remember? through my OPGG, and I seriously have played significantly less as every single season progresses. Like I'm so looking back. Have, at... 
yeah, have a, have a moment here, and I'm sorry I cut you off, but I think this is an important little point. How much did rank matter to you when you started? Uh, a lot. Yeah. Very closely tied to my identity. And, like, there's that, like, content creator, like, I gotta make it sort of attitude where, mm -hmm. like, yeah, like, solo queue mattered a lot. Um, and I don't know if it's just because, like, I have quote-unquote made it as a content creator, which, yeah, that sounds big-headed, but whatever, uh, that it doesn't matter a lot. It, but, yeah, I, I definitely think that the integrity and, like, health of solo queue is heavily... And it's so sad because I used to love like that's used to be that used to be how I enjoyed the game. I'm looking back and I'm almost getting like sad because like I used to right? love grinding this game. Like it was so fun and competitive and cutthroat and had such high highs and you know, you had the low lows, but like I don't know, it's just so different now. It's just so much I, worse. I I would say I would but here's the thing, it's worse to us. You know how many coaching clients I get? See, I don't want to doom and gloom the podcast because I think it's literally exclusive to us. Yeah. Like I get, I swear to you, the the price, and this isn't me flexing, that you go to my poker site and you can, or my poker site. Oh, go bro, you got a little site. side hustle yeah, going? I, I'm going to coach, I'm gonna coach <laughs> that too. You go to my coaching site and you can see the prices. I'm booked every day. I'm booked like every day, three well, times maybe a day. It's just a, maybe it's just the getting old thing then. Maybe it's just the priorities maybe. and – Maybe, but I'll tell you this: I feel the same way. But there's so many people that are booking, co that are paying money. They just, they legit want like. Some of these guys are like, dude, I would love to just make gold. I can't do it, mm -hmm. and I can't figure it out. And this game's hard, and I want to be good at it. And they'll pay good money to to learn it. So I just think it's funny that we're over here just like me. Yeah. I, I truly believe this, by the way. But I, it's like we're like me. We hate ranked right now. This is <laughs> bullshit. It's not like it was. But to a lot of people, it still is, which to me is it's almost kind of like riots succeeded in what they wanted to do. Which right. they want. It's almost like they want to push out the the people that are good, but they're not like pros. Like they're not like pushing riots brand that hard. Right. Yeah. Like they don't really well, they don't really care if we're happy. They just know that we're going to be here regardless. <laughs> right. We, they, you know they, got, they got us addicted. So it's like you almost don't even need to keep that portion of your, you know, audience yeah, happy. Cause like, that's what it is. Yeah. yeah. Well, it makes me happy to hear that. Well, not not only that you're having success as a coach, but that like people are still passionate about it. it it's still like something worth driving towards for a lot of people because I, I still mm. I still remember like to this day the day that I hit gold, which was like my first massive goal as a league player. And it was just like, it was just like so euphoric. Like, and I, I'm glad that people are still getting that and like working towards it and seeing solo queue as something worth playing. Uh, I, I wish that I still did, but you know, I guess my priorities are just different right now. Yeah. I, I, I want it to matter more. I mm -hmm. think, I think it starts with, I think it starts with, like you said, a nuke, Yep. a, a ranked nuke. There's got to be a point. I also, I don't know. I feel, I feel like that Smurf Q shit was just a monumental. It's just that's another example. They just want to keep the, they want to keep the studs away from the Jerry's. The studs. <laughs> yeah. The studs. Is that, is, is that like a farming term Jerry's. or something? I feel like I've heard that. Like, the studs, you know, like when it's that guy, it's the Chads, right? They oh, okay. The away from the I thought that was like a horse mating metaphor you made. Like, are, like, are, nah. I don't know, dude. Oh, are the, no, are the no, female no. horses called Jerry's or something? I don't know, dude. <laughs> no, no, it's like the, it's like the Chads. It's like, yeah. it's like we got to keep these Chads away from these Jerry's, these guys that are new. Right. And and for for me, I I personally just want it to feel like when people queue up for rank. They're not all trying to pretend that they've all made Challenger in a past life. Like it's it's getting really old. I I love the game and I think one of the best things that Riot's ever created, you know, obviously League's an incredible game, but one of the best things that they have and that they're losing every day, and this is why I bitch about this a lot on this podcast, is because I care and the more people that I can put into their mind, like, hey, this right. used to matter a B lot more. Bitching bitching does come from a place of passion. Like let's yeah, let's yeah, be real about does. it. Yeah. Yeah, it absolutely does. I I told I just told you like I I personally like where the balance is at. I personally love mm. that I can go in the jungle now with more than three champions. I love that when I play this game right now, it feels it feels pretty balanced for the most part, and there isn't anything that's just constantly pissing me off right mm. now. There's nothing that's pissing me off inside the actual game. Yeah, there's some new champions that I just roll my eyes at, but mostly it's just going to be Timmy's playing them. They can't pilot them, so it just <laughs> 
<laughs> it doesn't really matter to me anyways. <laughs> right. Yeah, give a give a ten year old Yasuo good fucking luck, buddy. <laughs> like I don't really care. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I've beaten I've beaten kids in high elo that try to first time Gwen. I don't give a fuck. Like it doesn't it doesn't change my gameplay experience. I know they're just gonna be idiots and not care about the macro of the game. Mm. But the one thing that I can't get back is I can't get back the value that the system had. Yes. I can't bring it back and they had it had such a value that people valued it as much as money. They value it as much as money. They'll book coachings. They'll care. They will like they'll uh, uh, like I'll have a guy literally just sit with me. I I've had guys get coached multiple times that I've seen get, you know, from like silver to diamond and they just want to get better at this game and it's like, "Man, you guys don't want to lose that." Like that's me. I was like, "Right, you don't want to lose that. That's so valuable. Like don't don't forget like this was the thing." Right. This is the thing that makes people play ranked. Do you, and, do you uh, think that yeah. Riot has overall kind of lost sight of that? Because it affects yeah. so much. Because, like, think about, like, let's just look at, the, like, the Twitch ecosystem. Like, the most popular streamers are sitting there playing high elo solo queue day in and day out, and most of them are complaining about it. You watch Tyler 1 stream for five minutes, you're going to hear him complain about, you know, whatever, his bot lane running it down or the balance of it <laughs> or solo queue matchmaking or whatever. And so, like, it's not just... You know, it's not even just like the quote unquote normal people. You like it affects everything. Like people's passion from the game affects the game top to bottom. Mm. Like you're going to oh, like you already have a you already have a Mundo gameplay on your channel? God damn. Oh yeah, bro. I'm fast, man. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even put that out. I didn't even put that out. I, I saw that rework and I said, Well, I'm not gonna talk about that. Your point is really good. Um and your question is good. And it would be it I feel like personally they've lost sight of it mainly because our scene NA for whatever reason we're a weird space like we're in a weird zone like if I if 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 I go to play in Korea like they're doing the dodge stuff that that definitely needs to go away and the data mine stuff that definitely that definitely needs to go away but they just care more so there's just games happening more often yeah. And I don't have to sit in queues as long. China, they hide names. Can't op.gg people in China. I did not know that. That's wait, that's such a like big thing to not oh, know. No, yeah, it's because nothing. because it's, it's nothing. that changes the entire culture. Absolutely. Like at a hundred percent. Man, that's, it's that's frustrating so wild. because it's like a switch that could be flipped. I'm sitting here as this 32 year old boomer, right, just getting mad at this video game mm. because I know that the majority of the people at Riot don't play past Diamond and never have and never will, right? Yeah. And I know because I've played so many games over the years competitively, I know that this fixes this game. I My little list fixes the game. I know it. Mm. it. It just does. Like, they, you know, there's just, there'd be less trolls. There'd be more people. Like, yeah, people it might get mad that they might have to play uh, off roll because they can't dodge anymore, right? Mm. Boo fucking who. <laughs> Because of what you just said, people should learn other roles. Yep. It's League of Legends, not League of Mundo Support or whatever the hell I'm looking at. <laughs> whoa, 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 bro. Don't be hating on my Mundo Support, all right? <laughs> hey, not, and but that's the thing is, like, you can't queue. Like, these people expect to literally get their role, right? right. Like, think about it. Yeah, this is, like, one of the first things you got to learn, like, growing up, right? It's like, uh... You don't always get you know, what you, you want sort of thing. Yeah, it's like yeah. you get a soccer ball and, you, and, and you're playing with it for, like, ten minutes and then you have to learn that you have to share the soccer ball with fucking Ralph and Ralph sucks, but, like, you have to share the soccer ball. That's just what we have to do. And and in, in this game, for some reason, we just don't we just don't have to do that. We can just be like, I would like bot lane mundo support, please. Right? And it's like everybody <laughs> has to give you that. That's how people act. Right. They, they are entitled to that. But it's like you don't even know how the game works. Why do, why do you want this role so bad? If you only play this role, you suck. You just said it. Yeah. Like, I don't know. I've been ranting at you tonight on this podcast. No, it's been fun. It's been fun, man. Thanks for having me on. <laughs> yeah, this has been uh, this has been a hell of a – a hell of a chat is there anything that you wanted me to plug before we shut this down i think it's probably a good it's a good stopping point i think yeah yeah i think i've uh complained myself <laughs> uh into a stupor i'm ready for a beer i don't know about you <laughs> are you east coast or west coast east coast indiana You're east coast yeah yeah so it's it's getting it's getting late for you too yeah <laughs> yep. over here like back in my day League of Legends great <laughs> yeah. Back in my day, there was no Akali. <laughs> <laughs> Solo queue used to mean something back in my day. <laughs> yeah. Uh, as for plug, nah, I stream. Um, well, I stream 
every single day at twitch.tv slash Ioki. And also, I, um, I've got two YouTube channels that I'm running. And cool. if, if you're interested in the stuff like um, like Mundo support, as Nice has lovingly pointed out, like kind of just weird stuff. I really like pushing like the boundaries of like what support is. And, you know, people get really mad at me and say like, oh, you should just play mana. Why aren't you just playing Leona? But uh, that's not really how I enjoy the game anymore, right? I don't want to play 2,000 mm -hmm. games of Leona in a season. I want to play Mundo support, bro. <laughs> uh, so if you like that kind of stuff and like seeing, you know, the, the trouble that, that kind, those kind of picks get into, uh, I think you'd really enjoy my stream. Um, niece, I, actually, I'm going to be posting this on my channel, if you don't mind. So if you if you want to do a plug, I know that's kind of weird to ask you to do a plug on your own podcast, but I think this is really yeah, cool. I, um, I, I mean, shit, I, you know me, dude. He's out um, there, um, guys. He, yeah, he is work. He's got seven different angles. All right. Apparently, he's got some poker coaching coming up. So I got, I got poker coaching. I got, I got, I got ninja coaching. I got a uh, Facebook thing. I got two channels. I got the uh, man. I don't know. I'm just doing a bunch of stuff. I'm just honestly at this point, I'm just still happy to be able to play a game that I love. It's, you know? It does seem I I I did a little bit of research. I watched like a, a video and a half or something. It does actually seem like you're in a pretty good spot. Like you're really enjoying what you're doing, and I think it's yeah, a pretty once, unique once the angle. Was thanks, man. Once the coaching, uh, I actually thank my wife. I know people say that shit all the time, where it's like, I love my wife, but most people's wives suck. My wife, <laughs> my wife's pretty cool because she was the one that was like, uh, you know, you should make a coaching site, or whatever. And uh, I, I kind of argued with her at first. I was like, you don't know nothing about, mm -hmm. about what I do. I don't need any coaching site. Because I was taking, I was taking um, coaching orders on, like, on uh, stream. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I could juggle these on my own. And then um, I made the, the site, and I immediately just started getting booked, like, every day. Yeah. Uh, like, just constantly. Like, I, had week I, I would open up my weekends, and initially the prices were a little lower. And it was like my whole weekend like my whole two weeks would be booked like i wouldn't have time off i would have to schedule free time and i still have to schedule free time so um yeah i mean coaching's taken off it's been awesome got another boot camp in the works we'll get you in that one all right man hit me up yeah it'll we'll be, get you in that fun. one we'll, we'll come up with something yeah we'll come up with something for support uh um but i'll talk to you more about that on offline but thank you so much for coming on yeah no problem um, man thanks again for having me it was fun yeah, I will. Uh, I will definitely be in touch. And good luck with streaming and everything. And just keep killing it, man. Um, I, I really, I appreciate how much time. I know how long you've been working uh, at streaming, and that's that's why I reached out to you because I, I, I see the effort. I, I know how much effort you put into what you do every day, uh, because I obviously do it as well. Yeah. So keep doing what you're doing and keep killing it, man. Thank you so much. All right, you too, brother. Later. Peace. Good night.